Hello all and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today in this particular video, we are going to see a very good uh, document understanding model that is layout LM model, which help us to uh, understand the documents and extract the relevant entities from the documents. So this is a, a kind of a state of art model, which is available and we are able to process a document uh, in a very easy way. So earlier what happened was to extract the relevant entities from a tableau data or from any document uh, data or any kind of unsearched data. We used to have a, a, a OCR, we used to do OCR on those, those kinds of documents and then uh, do the NER to extract the relevant entities and then do the necessary processings to obtain the results in a required format. But here this layout LM, uh, takes up the uh, much more information than just taking up uh, uh, information from OCR and NER to do the und understanding of a document and extracting the relevant entities. So we are going to see that. So before we uh, go into the layout LM uh, architecture, how it is helping us, uh, I just want to uh, demonstrate a, a data set that we're going to use, which is called FUNST. And in this uh, data set, uh, we want to extract this relevant information that is uh, like this kind of information just present in this kind of documents. So sometimes this is called as key and value, key and value pairs. So likewise, uh, we want to extract the information from a particular document in a real world scenario. So this might be helpful in the finance world, in a retail world, uh, where you want to extract the uh, some information from the invoices. So such kind of information if you want to extract uh, from the uh, tabular kind of data or such kind of data, then our OCR tends to get failed because OCR gets to start reading the data in a single line format and then applying on OCR uh, becomes very difficult, right? So to keep an intact of the structure of the document, uh, that's where the layout element will help us. So the OCR uh, will just not help in the real scenario by just uh, doing a uh, OCR on this particular kind of document and just doing the NER because uh, what happens is uh, the document structure keeps on changing and OCR will keep on uh, iterating new and new structure, right? So NER uh, for, for, the, for the NER, the job becomes very difficult to extract the relevant entities so because it is not taking care of the layout information since the layout keeps on changing according to the document. So to keep the information of the structure of the document or the layout of the information of the document, the layout LM help us to keep the information intact. And this is how uh, this model will help us. But uh, uh, this is how this will uh, model be able to extract the information, like how it has been shown here. So this is what we want in a real scenario, right? Uh, we just do it with OCR and do uh, necessary any other thing. But so uh, to eradicate such kind of things, such kind of problems of structure information uh, for each and every document, a layout LM will help us. So this is a data set we are going to use uh, for our training our layout LM model. And now let's, let's just jump to the uh, layout LM uh, architecture. So let me go through the architecture uh, and it's a brief introduction of it. So you can see this is the architecture of layout LM model. So here you can see, uh, image document image where we have this uh, information lying up here and we want to get the relevant information from this particular page from this relevant document right so what happens is it takes up this document and we pre-process this particular document like we apply OCR about this document and with OCR we also get to know the uh, position of the words in a particular uh, document so let's suppose if I extract a word from this particular document A and then I want to also uh, extract the information of uh, the word A present in an image document. So that bonding box information will be uh, also be a stored. So I just, uh, so this is the information that it generally takes up uh, this layout model. Like it takes the word, uh, it will extract the words from this particular page. And then it also takes the position of those words in a particular image. Now, so this information is being passed into this uh, OCR and this OCR information will be text uh, will be extracted in a form of uh, text embeddings and positional embeddings. So these positional embeddings are nothing but uh, the information of a particular word. Uh, and this is a text 
uh, which is present in a particular document. So you can see this is the word e date, which is embedding of a date. So this word date uh, is a text and its particular position of the word date present in a image. So that's information it takes up and uh, it takes the text embedding as well. Now uh, this particular uh, model, this layout LM model will prepare a embedding considering these two informations, the text as well as the positional embeddings. So positional embeddings are nothing but the position of a particular word in an image. So this two information is being passed into this layout LM model and in, and, and uh, layout LM embeddings is generated. So this embedding consists of the text information and uh, the relevant position information of the particular word present in a particular image. Right, that's, that's how the embedding of layout ML model is in process. And parallelly, this image is also being uh, forwarded to faster RCNN model, which help us to detect the region of interest where the words are being lying, right? So you can see this word date and its respective image of this uh, date word in an in a particular document is being captured by this faster RCN model. So that's what it is doing. So you can see this is the layout LM embedding of date word and this is the image of a date word in a particular image that is being cropped and the embedding of this uh, image or of the words are being prepared. And that's how uh, the the total embeddings like the image embeddings and the layout embeddings will be uh, calculated and added up and then it is prepared for the downstream tasks. So this is how the information flows in a layout LM model. It takes up the uh, three entities or three informations. That is a text information. Second is the position of a text in a particular image. And third thing is image embedding itself. So three information uh, flows into this particular layout LM model. And that's how the model is getting trained. So this is a general art architecture of a layout LM model. And this, this layout information, this extra information of the text uh, position in image help us to understand the uh, image and structure of a particular image and extract the relevant entities from the image with a per, uh, particular accuracy or with a good accuracy. So that's how the uh, layout LM is working. Now, to demonstrate the working of this uh, faster RCN and uh, layout LM model, uh, we are going to use this funds D data set and we are going to fine tune on uh, this funds D data set for, uh, on our uh, on our data set by using the uh, layout LM model. So uh, for that, uh, I'm going to use uh, hugging face uh, import uh, that is available over here in the uh, hugging face. So we can just directly use uh, their model. It is, it is being available in the hugging face. So I'm just trying to directly use it. So before that, we have to just uh, make sure that uh, GPUs are available in our local moment. And now after this, uh, we are going to import some of the libraries which are necessary and required for uh, installing the layout LM model. So these are the dependencies that we need to install. And once this uh, uh, information is being or libraries are being installed, we can uh, proceed with the data. So data extraction is also a process. But here I am just directly using the data that is available on the uh, hugging face. So you can just uh, download this data by using this link uh, present here. So let me just uh, run this. And once, it's, once it get downloaded, we can use this particular data set uh, for our uh, fine tuning of layout LM model. So we will be able to extract the entities from, uh, from the image directly without using, without using uh, any kind of uh, two steps model or three step model. Uh, it will just take up the structure information and the text information and the image embeddings and totally it will train a model and we'll get the embeddings, right? So this is what uh, the flow will be. So now we're just trying to uh, get the data. And once that is done, uh, we can uh, move on to the uh, preparation of this data. So you can see the data has been downloaded and we can just take a look at the uh, image data that has been downloaded. So you can see the data is in this format. It's a structure format. And we want to extract this name or this key and the name, the date and its date information supervisor manager so likewise you want to extract the informations from this particular uh, page so you can you can understand that this information 
or this this structure or this flow of a mention of a document might change and accordingly we have to uh, make sure that model also learn the structure of a document so that's how the layout model is helping us to understand the structure as well as the information which is present in the structure right so let's take the uh, data set uh, uh, which will, which are annotated so you can see in a data set i am getting a text r and d this is a text and it's a uh, bonding box information that is what is the location in a particular image right so you can see r and d word is present here so its location is uh, in the image is at at this coordinates and you can see the label it has given as other so it has been labeled with other tag right uh, uh, like we are trying to label this particular word as an uh, as an other class and the words uh, information being stored as this and there is no link right this we are not pro providing any kind of uh, relation between the two words it's just a single token classification model that you are going to build so it will just take up the word and it will classify into a particular category that will be other uh, question or uh, or any kind of other kind of classes right so we are going to uh, produce such kind of things and uh, likewise we are going to produce uh, the whole scenario and we'll build a model so now let us uh, see a particular image uh, and draw some information over it this this embeddings or this particular labels that we have uh, seen over here in the, in the form of text so we'll just uh, draw this uh, particular uh, labels over this image so you can see this is a uh, same image that I have uh, demonstrated above but now this is with the annotation so you can see this uh, particular uh, image has been or this particular word has been classified as other tag and this header these are the headers this is the question and this is the answer similarly this date as it has been uh, annotated as question and this is answer so these are nothing but the classes that are being annotated by uh, by the tools so we have to use a tool to annotate such kind of information and to prepare the data set accordingly so you might be in, uh, you might be uh, in a position to understand like what we are going to do we are just going to pass this particular image and get this kind of labels over the particular words in a uh, in a particular document and that's how we're going to extract and to annotate this such, such kind of uh, documents you can use label studio so here is the uh, link which you can use it this is a free tool you can uh, go to go through this particular documentation and install the label studio and prepare some script and uh, do this kind of and prepare the data set accordingly so i'll provide this link into the, in, in the description you can go through this particular documentation and you can prepare the data set likewise and annotate it in the same manner the, like how it is being shown here right so this is how we generally do we prepare a data set like this so we just take up the document we uh, drag and drop or we uh, pick up the uh, image or word information and give a class to it and that's how we annotate it and once this annotations are done we prepare the data set and we process, we will pre-process it right so to pre-process it uh, there is a uh, uh, there's a code given by the layout lm uh, directly so we are just directly using it that to pre-process the annotations according to the required format that model accepts so we're just going to run this particular uh, cell so that the annotations and everything get into the required format so once that is done uh, we are going to uh, take up the annotations and we are just going to identify that what are the unique labels available so let me just run this and we'll understand what what does this unique label means so you can see it has been saved into the labels.txt so let us go through it and it will save into label.txt so you can see these are the unique labels available uh, so these are these are the classes you can say answer is a class header is a class question is a class and others is a class such why such such kind of things are uh, the labels which are available so you can see uh, others is a class headers is a class question is a class and answer is a class and these are the unique labels right uh, so that's what the information we need to get so these are the unique labels or unique classes you can say that's what we have extracted from this pre-processing uh, that we have done so once this setup is done now we can start the training of a or we can process the data set in a form of pytorch and then we can start the training so before we process that data uh, we have to make sure that this uh, uh, this unique label uh, should be prepared right and then 
uh, we have to rest, just run this particular uh, cell uh, so that we can prepare the data set in a PyTorch format. So it will just take up this particular uh, uh, data set that, that we prepared, this labeled data set, uh, unique labeled data set. And then it will prepare a, a map that it will prepare a, or it will map a particular a label into an ID code. That, that means it will give a number uh, to, a, uh, to a label. So uh, we cannot just directly pass a class name right in a form of text. We have to convert into the some number, right? So that's what it is doing here. It is it is loading up the data. It is taking up the uh, this label, and it is it is mapping into the some uh, uh, number, right? So that's what it is doing, and that's what the simple uh, function is also helping us to do it. So we'll just run out this code, and we'll convert the uh, labels to the IDs, and now uh, we can check onto the labels how it is there. So you can see these are the unique labels available, right? And if you want to see this uh, label map, uh, we can check it also. So you can see uh, each each label has been converted to the uh, IDs, its, it's, its respective number, right? So this two, uh, this two represented by this particular thing and likewise other labels are uh, being, being represented. So once this is, once this setup is done, then we have to prepare the PyTorch data set. So for this, we have to import uh, tokenizer from layout lm uh, that is available in transformers and then we have to import some uh, classes from the uh, layout lm uh, library or you can say from the from the resource code so we are using that and the some data loaders from the uh, torch libraries to convert the particular data to a data loader format data lo data loader format right so uh, these are the arguments that particular model uh, takes up and this is uh, the uh, this is the class that will take up the uh, this uh, this particular uh, dictionary that we prepared to map the labels and it will prepare it in an argument format that's what this class is doing so this arguments is being prepared and then we are going to use this uh, layout lm pretend model uh, for the tokenizer and then once that is done now we are going to use this funds data set from the uh, transformer and then uh, we are going to pass these arguments that we have given here in tokenizer and the labels that we have prepared at, at the top and then padding tokens and we have, we have to give the train mode and like likewise we have to prepare the data set for the training so this this whole step is for the preparing the data set in a form of for, for loading up the data in a pytorch right so this is this is for training and similar way the test has been done so likewise we will prepare the data set for uh, uh, training and test by using the PyTorch loader and once that is done we can see some data set here uh, the length of there uh, and then uh, we'll print out some data set that is being prepared uh, from this data loader so it's just gonna run so you can see this particular uh, image uh, information is being OCR and uh, and it has been uh, given and or it has been tokenized into this particular unknown tags and the padding has been done so you can see this is the uh, input that we are going to pass so once that all the setup is done now we are finally into the training of the model so for that uh, we have to just import this uh, token classification class from the transformer and then we are going to load up that model from the transformer uh, uh, library so this is what we are going to do and once that is done we can just run up this uh, particular uh, code that has been provided and we can just start training the model on the prepared data set so right now i'm giving the five box to be trained but if you want more accuracy uh, or more uh, accurate predictions you can uh, get up to more or you can train up to for more epochs but for this tutorial i'm just using five epochs for the training so let's just run this particular the cell to train the model and let's wait for a few minutes to get the model trained okay so model has got trained now we'll just evaluate the model on the test data set so uh, this is the uh, code that has been written to evaluate the data set uh, on the trained model so we'll just run up this particular cell to get the predictions or to get the matrix uh, for the evaluation. So you can see the loss is uh, 0 0.7 for the, uh, 
four and precision is seventy one percent and recall is seventy eight and F one score is seventy five percent. So you can see just with five epochs, uh, we are able to achieve seventy five percent accuracy. But if I want more accuracy, I have to just increase the epochs and continue training for more epochs, right? So once that is done, uh, we can save this particular model. And we can just do the torch dot save, and we can save in a dictionary format of this model state. And then once that is done, uh, we can just uh, do go for the inferencing. So we'll just uh, take up a particular image, and we'll pass this image to the, our trained model. And then uh, we are going to see the predictions of this particular model, how it is doing, right? So first, uh, we have to uh, import this, or you have to you can say you have to clone up this particular. Uh, uh, GitHub, and then we have to install this particular PyTestRect. Why we are trying to install this PyTestRect? Because whatever the processing we have done for the training data set while training, the same processing has to be done for the new image, right? So in the in the processing, uh, we haven't seen any kind of uh, the major step that, that are being involved, but uh, but internally what it is being done is while annotation uh, we are we are just taking then OCR so you must remember this particular uh, architecture we are taking this image and passing it to the OCR getting the uh, text from the OCR and its respective uh, words uh, in position of from the image so these are the pre-processing steps uh, which has been done and which has been done in a particular data set that is funds data set so we are not aware of it but it has been done and it has been readily available, right? So it becomes very easy for to train our model. But while inferencing, we have to do the same steps, whatever whatever we have done for while training. So the same steps are being applied. So that's why we are using the PyTest Pi Rect uh, to process the uh, document image that we that is that is the new image that, that will coming up. We we'll process it. We'll pass it to the OCR. We get the text of that particular uh, text from those particular images. And the respective uh, uh, bonding box information where the texts are present in a particular image. So once that is done, uh, we have to run this uh, environment. Uh, so let me restart this environment, and we have to just uh, load up this model that we have saved. So let me just view of the image that we are going to process. Okay, I think it is not available. Let me. Okay, so we have uh, not processed it. Let me take up this particular GitHub that we have imported, right? So this is the uh, uh, GitHub that we have imported here. So we'll just take up this uh, imported GitHub and this file, which will help us to pre process all the processing uh, that we have to do it for the new uh, text or new image. So that's how the, all the code is being written. If you go through this particular code, all the pre-processing that has to be done is being given in this particular uh, Py file. So we're just right to going to use it. So for that reason, I have just imported this particular or cloned this particular repository and got this particular file to pre-process the same thing what we have, whatever we have done for the training. And we'll just import this and uh, let, let, it, let it get imported. And once that is done, we are able to see the image, the new image. You can see this is the new image uh, that we are passing it to, which, which, which is not uh, trained in the model. So we are going to pass this particular new image to the model and want to extract this information, right? So we'll do up this uh, by, by uploading up the model that we have trained. So it has the model has been saved here, you can see, in the current directory, uh, layoutlm.pt. So I'm loading the same model and, uh, and, and try to load up the model uh, with the with the labels that we have trained right so i think we haven't uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we, we don't have the numbers of the labels so let me just run this particular and then we'll check up the particular things you can see yeah uh, it's, uh, it's giving up the error so let me go and run on a particular cell so that we can get the number of labels right so yeah here it is so we want to get this number of labels so i will just run up this code to get the number labels now we'll get back to the same step to look up the or to run the or to inference the particular uh, image right so you can see this model we have loaded now we'll pass this uh, this particular image a new image to pre-process it so you can see uh, this pre-process is coming from this particular uh, import that we have done this particular uh, 
preprocess file. So this is from where the preprocess is coming up. Uh, this function is coming up, and we are passing an image. So what is it is returning is you can see image. It is returning the image. It returns it returns the word. It returns the boxes. That means the uh, boxes that has been uh, processed. That means uh, a, a scaled. Uh, we, do, we are not using the actual information of the image, but we are doing it uh, or scaling it into some uh, information, right, of the image to make it in a same information level. So you can say a standardization, we are doing it, right? And these are the actual box information. That's the information I was talking about, right? When we do the pre-processing, uh, this is what happens actually. It gets the image of the board, the text information, the bounding box information, and its actual bounding box information, right? So that's what we uh, generally get from the pre-processing. And then we pass this pre-processing word and convert this into the into the features that means we are doing the encoding uh, using a lay, uh, layout element tokenizer so whatever the step we have done here uh, uh, like encoding and all everything that we have done here uh, in this step right uh, here you can see we use this tokenizer and all to encode this particular text information that is being coming so the same steps are being given inside this particular uh, layout element preprocess.py file so we are uh, using this uh, convert to features. If you go into this layout element processor, you can see the function is, you can see the preprocess function and the convert to feature uh, is present. You can see it is uh, tokenizing the input, whatever we are doing it, and it is giving the uh, tokenized information, right? So that's what it is doing. You can see the, I am passing the information, preprocess information to the tokenizer, and it is getting the encodings uh, for, uh, for the model to uh, do the predictions. So once that preprocessing is done and the predictions are being happening, so once that is done, we are able to predict the model. So once that is done, you can see the uh, the, the encoding is being done and all the predictions are being happened. And now we are just going to uh, check on or visualize it uh, on the particular uh, image, right? So these are the predicted image. So these are the predicted information on the particular image. So you can see the model is able to predict. This is a question. This is the answer. This is a question. This is the answer. This is the header, and this is the other. So pay valid points. Others, other class. You can see this. This information is being uh, predicted nicely. You can see there are a lot of. Uh, there is uh, some missed information also being predicted. But yeah, it can be improved if we train it for a longer time, right? It we have just trained for five epochs, so right now the predictions are uh, getting uh, absurd. But yeah, we can uh, train it for a longer time, and we can get the right predictions. And we can just get the information and save into the required format in a JSON format. So that's how uh, we can train a particular layout LM model and get the information from a structured document, uh, getting the structured information of the document as well into a particular document. So that's how it will help in understanding a document and extracting the information from any kind of document, any kind of structured document, any kind of tableau data document any kind of invoice document, any kind of unstructured document which you want to extract information. So that's how uh, this uh, layout element model is powerful. And this is how we can use it. This is how we can train it. Uh, the whole uh, uh, code will be available in the link in the description. So you can just go through the code and you can just train your own model. And let me know if you have any doubts in the comments, right? So thank you. This is all about this particular video. and. If you like my channel, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.